Welcome to the Art of Listening to Your Body podcast. My name is Jin Ong and I'm your host. I love talking about the mind-body connection and how your physical body manifests your emotional state and how this leads to living a life grounded in values and driven by purpose. Hi there, today I'm going to give you an introduction into pain stories and why I think they're so fascinating. Then I'll share my own so you can get some insight. Why I love a good pain story. I think it's pretty easy to look at people from the outside, especially if they seem to have it all under control, they're successful, making money, living the dream and seemingly healthy. When you're in discomfort, not really knowing what you're doing with your life, but you know it's not all that great, Hearing other people's success stories can get you down and make it feel like you're not destined to achieve anything. Not that great, right? When you dig a little deeper, most people have been through their challenges, be it health or emotional. And I love it when these people share their difficult times they have been through and how they overcame it. Most of the time, you'll notice that these people have a different mindset. They have the ability to reflect on what has happened, treat it as a learning experience and work out what needs to change to move them forward from that. You won't be able to relate to everyone's story, so I'll be bringing on a variety of people from all walks of life in the hope that they can give you some pearls of wisdom and inspiration that you can also overcome challenges. I'll start with my own story and go into a bit more detail. I talk a lot about working out your weak spot or internal barometer the signs your body gives you when it's not happy. Mine is my skin. Ever since I was a teen, my skin has been my weak spot. I just didn't know it back then. I would get pimples and acne, which when I think about it, wasn't actually all that bad. It affected my face, my chest and my back. Being pretty vain and being a teenager, I just wanted it to go away. I used all sorts of creams, then stepped it up to the pill, I gained 10 kilos, but my skin was great. Then that stopped working. So I used antibiotics, but they only helped one part of my body. Then it was on to using chemical acids, burning my skin, and eventually Roaccutane, a really strong synthetic vitamin A treatment that pretty much sucks you dry and makes you really sensitive to the sun. I had to go on the pill because if you get pregnant on Roaccutane, birth defects are pretty likely. I also had to get regular liver function tests to check my body was coping with this medication. So all of this was pretty full on treatment. When I look back at the other stuff that was going on, there was no way I considered the impacts of diet or emotional factors. I definitely had and still have a streak of perfectionism. So having blemishes was horrible. There definitely were feelings of judgment and wondering if I was good enough. I was also a very angry child and teen and would regularly have a good fight and screaming match with my parents. With all the medications I took, I was simply suppressing everything. Roaccutane was meant to be this amazing drug that would cure your pimples forever, and it wasn't true. I got caught in a vicious cycle. Every time I came off my medications, my skin would flare up 10 times worse. So the easy option for me was to go back on them and suppress again. All of this really messed with my gut. I started to get side effects from the medication, which led me to using more medication to get these new issues under control. Now, the next part I'm going to go into is to give you an idea about how environment and work dissatisfaction played a part in my health issues for me. I moved from Melbourne, Australia, where I grew up, onto Wellington, New Zealand. For those of you who know Wellington, it's a little bit damp. Mold can grow on your curtains and clothes. I was working as an osteo and stayed here for about four years. Towards the end of this period, I was pretty unhappy with being an osteo. I loved the people I worked for and with, but I was really disgruntled about how I treated people. What I mean is this is when I knew about the mind-body connection and for the chronic patients with emotional issues, I was getting frustrated at not knowing how to broach the subject with them that their stress and other issues in their life was what was causing their pain or slowing their healing. During this time, I also learned to ski and became completely obsessed with it. This is my addictive nature. I decided to take a break from osteo and move to Wanaka on the South Island of New Zealand 
and enrolled in the ski patrol program in the hope to become a ski patroller and travel the world alternating working as an osteo and ski patrolling. During this period of time, my skin was great. Wanaka or the Otago region is notoriously dry and I've always much preferred cooler, more temperate climates than the heat in Melbourne or dampness that I experienced in Wellington. When the winter season was up, I took a job in Brisbane, Australia. After everything I've explained about climate, you'd probably wonder why. This is when I finally listened to my body because it made me. It did still take me another two years to put the pieces together though. In 2012, I was living in Brisbane. It was hot and humid and the work was amazing. But then one month in, I started to suffer severe acne on my face and body. It was much worse than what I ever experienced as a teen. It was a time when I got so many health issues. I had an ulcer on my eye. I got random fevers that would wipe me out. I was tired. My joints were so stiff that in the mornings I had to hold onto the handrail to walk down the stairs. And my body was breaking out in these really strange hives that appeared over my joint lines. I was spending thousands of dollars on beauty treatments in an effort to improve my acne. I saw a Chinese herbalist who made me a mix of herbs that my husband joked and said looked like tar seal, twigs and cockroaches. There were literally insect skins in my mix. I used cortisone on my eyes so that I didn't look like I was winking at my patients when I was treating them. And I took painkillers just to keep myself at work. I also found myself very controlling of my diet, going from a raw diet, raw vegan to vegan and gluten-free. Although I do still believe diet plays a big part in health, it can also be a distraction from dealing with the deeper issues. This went on for six months. My locum ended and I moved back to Wanaka, New Zealand. I ski patrolled and osteoed part-time just like I wanted. Everything health-wise cleared up within a couple of months. Then the next year I returned to Brisbane, same job, same stint, determined that what I went through was just a phase. One month in, everything hit me again. But this time it was really amusing to me. This time I had to laugh. My body was telling me I was so unhappy. I hate the heat and the humidity and I was working far too hard. I was lucky that the job was only for six months on both of these occasions because I got to experience that my body could be healthy and I could be much happier in a different environment like the South Island of New Zealand. I also got a better perspective on what work-life balance looked like for me. I could have easily stayed on as the money was great and I could have saved for a better future, but I would have constantly been looking for solutions to suppress what my body was trying to tell me and continue to be miserable. If I had to let the fear of change overcome me and stop me from trying something different as big as moving countries, I might still be in that same situation. I also see that I had great opportunities in Brisbane. I sought help through a therapist and great friend who ended up teaching me psychosomatic therapy. This is what turned the way I practice around completely. It gave me the ability to trust my intuition and read the body to help these chronic stuck patients on a much deeper level. Treating them became more satisfying and I had a renewed energy for my work. I always loved treating patients, but I just wasn't doing it quite in a way that aligned with me. I knew that Wanaka was somewhere I wanted to live and I questioned whether or not the way I wanted to treat would be accepted. That fear of judgment came up. I had learned how important it was to treat the way I wanted as this required far less effort and gave me energy. By this time, I also recognised the impact the environment and climate had on my body. So rather than compromising, I committed and I went all in. I moved to Wanaka, both my husband and my daughter came with me, and we started our businesses from scratch and everything has flowed from there. Now, I did have another blip with my skin, which was before we moved back. I had done a heap of gut work guided by a friend and naturopath prior to getting pregnant because I knew how important it was to pass on good gut health to my baby. Between 2014 and 16, my husband and I found ourselves living back in Melbourne. We had our daughter Violet and things were great for a year. She was a really easy baby and a really easy toddler as well. But what happened was I decided things were getting too easy. So I decided to start some postgraduate studies in Western medical acupuncture. 
look after a one-year-old, work a couple of days a week, and navigate a move back to Wanaka with not much money. I remember during this time, and when I had all the random sickness in Brisbane, feeling like I was triggering an autoimmune response in my body. This is where your body's own immune system turns on itself and attacks different tissues, often triggered by stress, physical, emotional, physiological stress. So this time in Melbourne was incredibly stressful and I started to break out in itchy patches on my feet and my armpits. It was the itchiest I have ever been and it drove me crazy. I couldn't sleep at night, I was so uncomfortable. I ended up going to the doctor and had some skin scrapings done. Turned out I had lichen planus, which is an autoimmune skin condition. So I knew I had really pushed myself too far. My acne had given me signs, the rashes I had in Brisbane, and now this. I knew though from seeing other autoimmune patients that many of the signs and symptoms and whether or not you go into remission has to do with big lifestyle changes. I realise now that I don't share with many people about the lichen planus and I never find myself saying I have an autoimmune condition because I know it was triggered by stress and can be resolved by rebalancing my stress levels. That's what I was aiming for with everything I was doing, more balance long term, but in the process I was putting my body under too much stress. This is when I came to understand how important it is to get help with pain and discomfort so that you're not so distracted and that you can start to make the right decisions. So using medications or certain interventions when and as needed with a view of hopefully coming off them in the long term. My skin will still give me the odd flare, especially during summer. So I love it when we get that cold snap or when there's snow, it's my happy place. But if I get an itch or a breakout, I often knew it was coming. And I take a look at what I can change to avoid this next time. The relapses are important lessons. But what did I learn from all of this? My underlying emotional traits like anger and irritation that would trigger my skin to erupt. Or these emotional outbursts that would let me know things weren't quite in balance. The negatives of perfectionism and the benefits of letting go of this to a degree and how skin represented in me very much a fear of judgment and criticism. I also learned the importance of environment, climate, and making sure I lived in a place I wanted to be, amongst the snow and mountains and drier air. I also learned how important it is for you to follow your heart despite what your mind says, have a bigger picture in view, and take small actionable steps towards this. If you express who it is you truly are, you'll have more energy, more resilience to overcome challenges, and you'll attract the right people and live a much happier life. Right now, I love what I'm doing. I love to utilize my skills to help people understand their body on a deeper level, to liberate people of pain physically and emotionally by bringing awareness to what is going on. Ultimately, the aim is to reconnect them with their sole purpose, encourage them to express this and live to their full potential. Thank you for listening to this podcast. If you enjoyed it and want to hear more, please subscribe and share this with your friends. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram. My handle is The Art of Listening to Your Body. If you're interested in getting started with a foundational exercise, head to my website, planningpowerhouse.com and grab your free core values worksheet.